My time with WoW has been full of ups and downs, highs and lows, and I've got a lot of thoughts to share with you. As I make this video, World of Warcraft is the most popular MMORPG in the world. Is that because it's the best MMORPG available, or is it because so many people have so many years invested into it that they refuse to let it go? Or is it both? That's the question I set out to answer when I returned to WoW this year after taking a massive break from the game. You're probably here because you're wondering if World of Warcraft is worth playing in 2023. That, or you're someone who already has thousands of hours played in the game and you're just here to see if my thoughts align with your own. Either way, let's find out. This video is coming from someone who has played the game on and off since beta, though there was a lot more off than on, which means I've never quite burnt out on WoW so bad that I couldn't stomach the thought of coming back again. So here comes an honest review of World of Warcraft in 2023. And to be honest, I was surprised by my experience. Let's talk about why as I dive into what WoW is doing right and what I think it could be doing better so that you can hopefully decide if World of Warcraft is an MMO you should play in 2023. First, let's tackle the solo content because as much as we might picture ourselves logging into our MMO of choice and doing nothing but group content every day, it rarely works out that way for many of us. So how is the solo content? Well, this answer is complicated. I've got to break it into parts, but before I do that, there's a ton of it. I mean, I have never seen so much content as WoW has. It's got 18 years worth of zones, expansions, dungeons, raids, quests, and if you were a completionist, there is so much that you can do and complete and collect in World of Warcraft as a solo player. You can of course quest, you can go back around and solo the old dungeons and raids for really cool cosmetics, armor, and mounts and more. And with the addition of the new class called the Evoker in Dragonflight, you can do that on a total of 13 different classes with three different specs each. But let's go back to the beginning really quick. The solo experience starts with the leveling process, a quintessential part of every MMO. And in World of Warcraft, this is where you really start to see the 18 years of content start to be both a kiss and a curse at the same time. Yo, get out of my video. Hey, what about my You're world? You're from a kid's game, aren't you? Not exactly my audience. That is not true. Hero Wars has vibrant graphics, cool gameplay, and a user-friendly interface. All right, well, let's check it out then. Yeah, tell them more about it. In Hero Wars, everyone can find a character to suit themselves. We have cyborgs, aliens, vampires, even furries won't be disappointed. I think I'm going to unlock Chaba next. He's an awesome tank who literally devours his enemies. Nice. But Celeste is the real S tier. She can switch between a DPS dark form and a healer light form, which makes her incredibly useful for any situation. Hero Wars is perfect for playing on the go, whether you're riding public transportation, sitting in lectures, or even while playing something else. By the way, from February 13th, you can gather soul stones and skin coins for three amazing heroes with the new romantic skins that also boost their stats. Power up your team with Amira, Jorgen, and my favorite, Kira. It's very easy to start playing, but assembling a perfect team of heroes is an art in itself. For example, Modra the Shaman can't heal Darkstar the Elf as efficiently as good Grandma Martha can, while the slower cleaver makes a great pair with the swift Isaac. Hero Wars is a world of six unique modes, more than 300 Guild Wars servers, and 100 million players. You can play alone or see who among you and your friends is the top dog. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Here's a question for you. Where can you get 30,000 coins, 600 emeralds, and five awesome heroes to start dominating in Hero Wars right away? Too slow? The answer is in the link in the description below. Play Hero Wars now. All right, let's get back to the video. They've added a new starting zone to streamline getting players to level 10, and that was great. It's a solid introduction to the game in an updated area, and it does the job well. The nostalgist in me misses the old days of starting in a different biome based on the race you chose, but nostalgia aside, I felt like the first 10 levels were really solid. After that, the game lets you choose from a variety of expansions to get from level 10 to 60 in, but it will drop you into the BFA storyline by default. At this point, I had no idea what was going on. I was somewhere between 30 30 minutes and an hour into the game, and this person at the beginning of the Battle for Azeroth expansion was telling me I was their savior. This is why I went seeking the Horde, and why I call upon you, one of its greatest heroes. Uh, no, no, no. You must have me confused with somebody else. I've done literally nothing that would make me one of its greatest heroes. I think, I think you must be confused. Father is set in his ways, but he is most observant. I would wager he already knows of your role in freeing me from Stormwind. Um, Stormwind? I've I've never been there. I never freed you from there. But but I'm glad we're going to go talk to your father. Maybe he can convince you that uh, I'm the wrong person for this job. Considering like I just learned how to loot ten minutes ago. Power comes through focus. Take care. I will do whatever it takes.
I am not qualified for anything at all. The eyes of the kingdom rest upon you, champion. This day, I name you Speaker of the Horde. Um, so he's crazy too. I've barely hit level 10. I'm doing like double digit damage and the pacing here really falls apart. I had no idea what led up to this moment. So I was confused. I would say that the level 10 to 60 portion of WoW is by far the weakest part of the new and returning player experience. But if you can get through that, the solo content that comes after it is absolutely amazing. Right now, level 10 to 60 feels like a formality. They just aren't sure how to deal with. They can't just drop you into Dragonflight, but they also stop the new player experience at level 10. I think as far as new players are concerned, a much more cohesive main story quest from one to current expansion would do wonders for making the journey to the newest expansion more fun, cohesive, and engaging. Fortunately, level 60 comes fast and then you're in Dragonflight and all those problems are gone. Instantly, the pacing feels right and you feel like you can get invested in the story. Dragonflight was some of the most fun solo leveling I've had in any MMO ever. And that is no exaggeration. The zones were vibrant and beautiful. You felt rewarded for exploring, whether you were finding ways to upgrade your dragon or caves to mine your way into or chests to open. It it was all a blast, made leagues more fun by the addition of dragon riding, which has solidified in my eyes that the days of MMOs adding basic mounts that move slightly faster than you can are over. Mounts can and should be used to make getting from A to B more fun. We spend so much time traveling from one location to another in MMOs. If you can make that simple act more fun by designing interesting mounts like these dragons in WoW or the griffins that inspired them in Guild Wars 2, you should. That would mean you're making a massive portion of the time players spend playing the game more fun. It's both brilliant and essential. I think WoW's successful adoption of physics-based mounts marks an evolution in the way successful MMOs are going to be developed moving forward. MMOs can and should use mounts as a way to make the game more fun. Jumping on something with four legs that moves slightly faster than you used to just isn't impressive anymore. We've done that for 20 years. The solo content in Dragonflight was some of my favorite, in no small way thanks to dragon riding, leveling my way through the zone, improving my reputation with various tribes, leveling up crafting, and just generally exploring. It all felt good. On top of that, you could actually get incredible gear from doing open world questing and exploring. Blizzard just did a fantastic job of giving you reasons to go back to all the Dragonflight zones each week after you'd already finished the quests you wanted to do there. All of this to say that if you're a primarily solo player, I think you'll love the amount of solo content you have access to in WoW. The new content especially stands out as amazingly well done. The old content can be fun to romp through to up your fashion and mount game. It would be an understatement to say that it's going to be a very, very long time before you run out of things to do in WoW as a solo player, and I know you're really going to enjoy the mobility that dragon riding provides in the new zones. It's just plain fun. Next, let's talk about the group content. Man, the group content was a bittersweet experience for me. On one hand, the dungeons and raids were loads of fun. Seeing a combination of new dungeons and old dungeons on rotation for Dragonflight was really cool. Some of those old dungeons I haven't run in years, and some I've never run before at all. So it was cool to see some of them become relevant again. Climbing Mythic Plus keys was a lot of fun, getting better gear, and dealing with more affixes as a result was great. My favorite fights, though, were in the raid. I really enjoyed the boss mechanics and the camaraderie. It's been such a long time since I had a static raid group to run with every week. It took me back to the good old days of MMOs. The experience of this content was insanely fun. The downside was I had awful luck. I could not get a piece of gear to save my life. We'd kill a boss, loot would drop, and I'd lose the roll. I went nearly four weeks of raiding with almost zero drops. And then, in week five, my luck finally turned and I got multiple upgrades in one raid. It was beautiful, but still, going into week Week seven of our raid group, I had zero tier pieces. For those that don't know, tier pieces are the ones that everybody's after when they go into these raids. And I had none of them going into week seven of our raid group, almost two months of raiding later. It was very conflicting for me to enjoy the content so much, but also to sign in, play for a few hours and have nothing to show for it when I signed out at the end of the raid session. It's worth noting that my experience wasn't normal. There were people in the group that had four pieces of their tier gear after only two weeks. No one else in my group had the luck that I did or the lack thereof. So it's certainly not what you should expect to encounter. But if I was to state the pros and cons of the group content in WoW, it would be that the group content itself is amazing. The cosmetics that you can earn are fantastic. My weapons and armor looked really cool, even as someone who had awful luck. My one grievance was the loot system. I think the loot system in WoW leaves a lot to be desired. You can only run these bosses once per week per day. 
difficulty. So when the boss drops a bow and no one else in the group can wear a bow, and then the next boss drops chainmail and no one in the group could wear chainmail, and this was your only run for the week, it was a bit deflating to say the least. I think that at the very least in time-gated content like this, loot shouldn't drop that nobody can use. So that's why I say the group content was a bittersweet experience. It is fantastically made. The fights were a ton of fun. Climbing Mythic Plus keys was a neat way to progress with a few friends without needing an entire raid group. The raid itself was incredibly well made with great mechanics on all of the boss fights, but getting no loot and then watching a bow drop when no one else in the group could even use it left me wondering why they thought that was a good idea in time-gated content. Next, I want to touch on quality control. Usually when I bring this up, it's a bad thing, but holy cow, I was impressed at how fast Blizzard fixed bigger issues that I was running into. And before someone explains how there's a bug that's been in the game since Kata, I get it. It's a big game. It's got some long-standing bugs, but relative to other MMOs that I've been playing, the turnaround on getting these things fixed is insane. It was this level of polish and the speed at which the problems were fixed that reminded me I was playing the number one MMO in the world. Blizzard's turnaround on these fixes was insane. No sooner would I complain about something than there would be of patch the next day that fixed it. The attention to detail and the desire to get it right was noticeable, and I thought it was worth mentioning because I've dealt with bugs in other MMOs that really serve to hold the game back. They act as a mild but constant discomfort, like sand in your shoes, and it can really distract you from enjoying the game. I don't like sand. It's coarse, and rough, and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Oh yeah, please subscribe. Please. Or don't. It's not like this video's fate depends on it or anything. So kudos to WoW for handling this so much better than other MMOs that I've played. Now let's talk about combat in WoW. Combat can make or break an MMO, so it's always worth discussing in these reviews. First of all, I gravitate towards big weapons. Always have, always will. The biggest thing I could put on my Barbarian back in D2 was a polearm. So one of the first characters I made was a polearm whirlwind Barbarian two decades ago. I haven't changed, so this time when I played WoW, I chose a Fury Warrior. Why? Because they can hold not just one giant weapon, but two giant weapons, one in each hand. It was an easy decision. As you probably know, WoW is a tab target MMO, and so if you enjoy playing tab target MMOs, you're in luck. The cool thing here is that Blizzard also added an action combat mode that will automatically target the things in front of your character so that you can largely play the game without ever hitting the tab key. Nine times out of 10, just looking at the thing you want to attack is enough. And it's not really until you're doing something like pushing mythic plus keys and it's critical you get interrupts on specific targets that you even need to consider tab targeting or clicking on mobs. This was a pleasant surprise for me as I came to WoW after playing a couple of other action MMOs. Turning on the new action combat function made it a seamless transition from those action combat MMOs to WoW. I really loved this new feature. At the end of the day, some people only like action combat and some people only like tab target combat. And I'm one of the weirdos who likes both. But regardless of where you land on the spectrum, I think that you could enjoy WoW's combat. WoW has a lot of abilities and for some people that's going to be a big turnoff. Personally, I enjoyed having burst windows, self heals, damage mitigation abilities, and long powerful cooldowns. It creates a lot of opportunities for player agency with in the fight. But if that sounds like a hassle to you, I will say that there are classes in WoW with specs that only require to use four or five abilities while putting out massive damage. So if all the abilities are intimidating to you, just look at which class presently has a simple rotation and you'll be fine. No MMO is perfectly balanced, but WoW does an exceptional job given how many different classes and specs that it has to balance each patch. Another topic I always cover in MMO reviews is the population health. Well, when it comes to WoW, there is no better example of a healthy population. I mean, seeing as how it has the largest MMO population in the world. If MMOs were rated purely by the number of people playing them, WoW would be the king. I never had a problem finding people for content, whether it was jumping into dungeons, LFRs, or finding fills for my own raid groups. The population is massive, and as long as you're in the newest expansion, I don't think you'll ever feel alone. If we look at how WoW's been trending, it looks like it's been on the way up for the last year or so, which feels in line with the community sentiment over the same period of time. The WoW community has felt more heard in this expansion than they have in a really long time, which makes it feel like the future of WoW is looking bright again. Moving away from borrowed power and back towards talent trees has been a great change for the game and something that the community has long requested. All of this to say that the population of WoW is second to none and if WoW is dead then every other MMO in existence is dust because their populations still pale in comparison. Next up, we've got PvP. I really enjoyed the PvP in WoW, although I fell behind the curve pretty quickly and constantly found myself fighting against better players with better gear. PvP in WoW takes skill, but it also takes gear, and if you grind the gear, you will definitely feel yourself perform leagues better in PvP. If you don't farm your PvP gear, you'll definitely feel that as well. Fortunately for PvP mains, you can get all of your PvP gear by PvPing. I played through the entire expansion with War Mode turned on, which meant that I could gank or be ganked by Alliance members at any time, and I definitely got ganked by 
by Alliance members many, many times. But the punishment for dying in PvP is nil to none. Just a quick ride back to your corpse and you're back in action. Because the upside to PvP was solid and the downside was so incredibly minor, I just stayed flagged the entire time I played. I got more open world PvP in Dragonflight than I have in any other MMO because people were so willing to participate in it. PvP balance doesn't seem to be worse than other MMOs and never stopped me from enjoying it. But PvP isn't limited to just Overland. You can also play PvP in small scale arenas and large scale battlegrounds. PvP in WoW is heavily crowd control based. Crowd controlling someone would be temporarily incapacitating them for a while through a stun or a sleep and so on. Usually in WoW PvP, your death is preceded by a prolonged period of you not being able to control your character. These long bouts of not being able to control your character were probably my least favorite part of PvP in WoW. That's the most frustrating way to go, just watching your character stand there while it gets mercilessly beat on. But there's a lot of strategy that can be built around those CCs, so it's not for nothing, but it definitely won't be for everyone. Relative to other MMOs, the PvP scene in WoW is incredibly alive. I could casually queue into massive battles anytime I wanted. When compared to other MMOs, I think PvP in WoW is in a great state. Next, we have monetization. As someone who has played MMOs with every type of monetization under the sun, I find that the ones that require you to pay a sub end up being the least expensive, the least pay to win, and the least inconvenient. As long as you cancel the sub when you stop playing, it's usually an incredibly affordable way to play an MMO. And if we look at the top three MMOs in the world right now, it looks like most of you agree sub to play seems to result in the highest quality MMO. Each of the three most popular MMOs in the world right now require a monthly subscription. Generally, this means you have less chance for pay for convenience or even worse pay to win. So how does WoW work? Well, you can try WoW very briefly for free, but to actually play the game past the first 20 levels, you're going to have to subscribe to the game for 15 bucks a month and then buy the most recent expansion. Once you've done those two things, you have access to the entire game. You don't have to buy anything else until the next expansion comes out, which usually happens once every two years or so. The game features WoW tokens, which are a currency you can buy in game with gold and then use to pay for your WoW subscription. So technically it could be possible to pay for your WoW subscription with in-game gold. WoW tokens suffer from the same downside as bonds in old school RuneScape, crowns in ESO, gems in Guild Wars 2, in that you can sell them to other players for gold, thereby condoning RMTing within the game as long as the cash shop currency is involved. All else equal, I would rather this wasn't a thing in any of these games, but I didn't find that it negatively impacted my experience to a noticeable degree. The cash shop in WoW sells things like cosmetics, pets, and mounts. It also sells level skips for those that can't be bothered to play the game that they just purchased. But most importantly, the cash shop passed the need test for me. I never felt like I needed anything in it. I never felt tempted to go there so that my character could look good. There were plenty of cosmetics I could earn in the game that looked amazing. Same goes for my mounts and my pets. All in all, I would say WoW is one of the most fairly monetized MMOs out right now. Buy the game and the sub and you never have to open your wallet again. Next up, let's talk about character customization. Cosmetic customization in WoW sort of needs to be broken into two parts. There's the customization allotted to you while making your character, and then there's the customization you have access to once you're in game. The character creator itself is passable, but no doubt subpar by today's standards. You have a limited number of basic presets to toggle through, and you can pick your favorite combination of the bunch. It gets the job done, but it's not what anyone would call impressive in 2023. But what the game lacks on the character creation screen, it makes up for with its transmog system in game. It has 18 years worth of weapons, armors, and mounts for you to collect and choose between and a lot of these look absolutely amazing. One of my favorite things that WoW has is its weapon illusions, which allows you to add your own favorite particle effects to nearly any weapon of your choice. You can mix and match weapons and illusions to get some really insane combinations. Speaking of great additions to WoW's cosmetic game, recently WoW added the trading post, which is a fantastic way for you to earn really cool cosmetics by playing the game. Some of these cosmetics, like the Celestial Steed, were once cash up only, but now can be earned by playing the game. All in all, it's a great addition to the game. They even let you freeze items just in case they're going to rotate out before you had a chance to get them. This prevents it from turning into some giant FOMO generator. It's a really well-designed, really player-friendly system that I'm a big fan of. Now for the future of World of Warcraft. No one wants to jump into an MMO that doesn't have great things ahead. Fortunately, WoW has released a fantastic roadmap of what the coming quarters look like. This thing has been incredibly well received by the community. It's got new zones, new raids, new PvP seasons, Mythic Plus dungeon pools, profession updates, UI improvements, mega dungeons, world events, and even more. There is absolutely no no shortage of content being put out by WoW. It is such a stark difference from the approach to Shadowlands in all the best ways. It's great to see the WoW community so positive and the future of the game looking so bright again. And like I touched on earlier, interest in the game has been trending up over the last year, so I'm excited to see how they double down on the success of Dragonflight, what the future of Dragon Riding holds, and how they utilize that in future expansions. It's going to be a lot of fun to follow. So, in conclusion, 
To circle back to the question I asked at the beginning of this video, is WoW the most popular MMO right now because it's good, or is it the most popular MMO right now because it's got so many players with so many years invested into it that they don't want to let it go? I think the answer is both. While the solo experience is a bit unsure of itself from level 10 to 60, before and after that it's fantastic. And once you get into Dragonflight, it's arguably one of the single best solo experiences in any MMO ever. The number of cool cosmetics, mounts, and pets that you can earn, the dragon riding upgrades that you can find, and the actually legitimate gear upgrades that rare bosses can drop. The depth and the breadth of the solo content in this expansion was truly impressive and really did serve to remind you that you're playing the biggest MMO with the biggest budget in the world. The group content was great, mythic dungeons were solid, finding upgrades while pushing keys was a lot of fun. Bao gets a bad rap for having a toxic player base, but I find that those players have existed in every MMO I played once I got up to the difficult content. The elitists, the players that forget that they were once new and think that they booted up the game ready to do Mythic 10s on day one. I didn't run into many of these players and the encounters I had with them were really brief, so I don't feel like the percent of these guys in WoW is a lot higher than any other MMO. As for quality, WoW is still one of, if not the most polished MMO out there. The size of the game relative to the bugs that exist is really impressive. The turnaround on getting things fixed that bothered me specifically was incredible fast. The combat was solid. It's an 18 year old MMO that has evolved tab target combat almost as far as it can possibly evolve. The addition of their action combat mode was fantastic for players like me that switch back and forth between tab target and action MMOs. It makes the adjustment period so much less jarring and so much shorter. The talent tree system along with the different specs that you can choose from make finding a build for you to enjoy playing a lot of fun. The only qualm I have here is that I would have tried so many more classes and specs if the game was more alt friendly, but compared to other MMOs, WoW is perhaps the least alt-friendly MMO out right now. The thought of re-leveling from scratch wasn't so bad, but then doing all my Mythic Plus keys again, and my raids again, I think I'm gonna be a one character per expansion kind of guy for this game. I just don't have time for more than that. The population is, well, massive, right? It's the biggest MMO in the world, and for good reason. They've put a lot of work into this game, and they've put a lot of the money they made back into it. And it's noticeable. Not just the amount of content, but the quality of the content is just truly impressive. The PvP in the game is solid, but if you aren't a big fan of losing control of your character for long periods of time, you'll probably get tired of it pretty fast. It features a gear progression system that lets PvPers focus on PvP, which I think is great. I found PvP matches anytime I looked for them, so it seems incredibly active relative to other MMOs. The monetization Monetization is your old school MMO monetization, buy and sub to play, free trial for 20 levels, and then you can pay up or move on. If you want to grind hard for gold and play the game without paying real money for a sub, you can always do that. The cash shop passed the need test as I never felt like I needed it to get amazing cosmetics, mounts, pets progression. The game has a near endless amount of varied cosmetics for you to earn in new and in old content. And finally, the future of the game looks solid. This MMO continues to hold on to the top spot for 18 years and counting, which is just absurd to think about. But when you come back and play one of its expansions and you see the size and the scope of what they've added, it makes sense. So should you play World of Warcraft in 2023? Let me know what you decided down in the comments below. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you're still here, please consider liking and subbing for more quality MMO content. This channel focuses on the state of the genre and has weekly videos about existing and upcoming MMOs for you to play. Massive shout out to my YouTube members. To become a YouTube member, click the join button below to have your name appear on every video, access to a private Discord channel, and behind the scenes footage and more. Sincerely, thank you so much for watching. And if you're not sure what to do next, check out one of the videos that's popping up on screen right now.